So, in the name of collecting more science, we're gonna throw together a satellite using whatever we have lying around and then send it somewhere. Probably somewhere like Minmus because I haven't been there yet and there's probably a lot of good science waiting there. We sent the satellite to other places before, but the difference is we don't have all the fancy satellite doodads that we had last time. Like, these are the only solar panels we have and they don't even move. And getting better electronics is really expensive. Hopefully we'll be able to do that after this mission. The difference being we're relying on the data reports that get sent and not the samples because I don't think we're getting this thing back. But we do have some satellite things that we can use like these bodies here, except they're really small. And I'm not too sure what the difference is between these two, huh? except for like the weight, but that should be good for us. So what we'll probably do is have this thing encased in some of the panels that we have here and also just build a reliable chassis around it. <laughs> like that is huge. And the best part is all these materials are super light, so it should work out well for us. Now we just do what we do best and throw solar panels on this entire setup so that it gets constant exposure to the sun. Oh, and I could probably use a few batteries on here too. That seems like a good idea. And these things do come packed with a reaction wheel. And then we need to put satellite antennas on here. Maybe something like that. That looks good. Actually, I think those will look better up here. Ooh, but these ones have a way better transmission rate than these ones. And it's deployable too. So we can put two of them on here like this, and then when they deploy, they look like what? Whoop! <laughs> and then before we forget, we need somewhere for this little thing here because it's way lighter than the big one. So that can just go on the back like this. Or maybe it can go on the front like a mouth. Yeah, that looks a lot better. The weirdest satellite I've ever put together. <laughs> Literally gonna call it the science slug. So now that we have this little assembly, we need to strap it into a rocket. And you know what? I think having monopropellant in here is gonna help out a lot with the fine tuning positioning of it. So we can take a few of these RCS thrusters here and just put them around the bottom of the rocket like that. Not the rocket, the satellite. That should help control it, even though it's not really around the center of mass, but we can just do it like that and it's no worries. It's crazy how much weight that monopropellant drum adds. There are smaller ones. What if those are better? Just put a couple of these right around there. I like that. Now I'm really worried about the aerodynamics of this thing. So I think what would be best is putting it under one of these like fairings, which are not very big, granted, but they should be able to wrap around the whole thing in just a very tube-like manner. And that that's looking pretty good right there. And before I forget, we need to put a separator on here because we need this thing to get a lot of distance between itself and the rest of the rocket. Speaking of the rest of the rocket, we can work on that. And we do have large fuel tanks on us now too. Well, medium, but that is very ideal right there. It's the perfect size. So that can just go right there, and that's a very good rocket. That alone gives 5,000 Delta V. And the best part is we have some large boosters with us too. So just strapping these on here actually takes away Delta V because we need to separate them and get the staging properly. So what does a trip planner say about getting to Minmus on a one-way trip? It only takes 5,000 Delta V for it, really. And that's also for bringing it to the surface, which surprisingly doesn't take a whole lot. Now, how's the... Engineer support. Ooh, very good thrust to weight ratio. I think we got it. Now to make this easier, we'll just set the Minmus as a target to begin with. Ooh, and it looks like it actually does have a bit of a tilt compared to Kerbin. Well, this will be interesting, but I've been in worse situations, so we're just gonna go for it. And I'm starting to think that reaction wheel is not nearly big enough for this vessel. Tilting way too early and in the wrong direction, but these boosters are working really well for getting us up in the space. They're done there, and our total apoapsis is 60,000. Not bad. And I probably should have checked center of mass before looking at the rest of this thing. Yeah, no wonder it's not working. So if we slap you right there, then that's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Well, thankfully we have these adapters here, so it looks better at least, but it is still very much not where the reaction wheel doing? should be. Let's see, trying to get that reaction wheel close to center of mass. What if we just get weird with it and give the rocket a sort of hourglass shape that should hopefully work. It's a lot closer to center of mass. And also once the rockets boost off, it's wow, dead center. Excellent. Nice. Ooh, and if we control where the boosters are, we can get even closer. So that's about as high as we can get the boosters there naturally. And that looks really good right now. That should work a lot better for us. Except now we gotta recreate the fairing again. No problem there. And we actually get the paint scheme back. So it should hopefully work a lot better this time. 
and away we go. Okay, so far it's staying a lot more stable. That's very good. Now we'll figure out the tilt once we actually get in orbit because it doesn't seem to be too big of an issue. We just need to get up to a certain point and then start rotating this thing. Oh, but why is it going that way? Why are you tilting that way? That's not even... <laughs> That's not even where I wanted you to go. Well then, I guess we just can't escape the flips for style. Thankfully now we can get rid of these things. And there is no way we are coming back from this. So I was right to be concerned about aerodynamics, except how do I fix it? Because the issue is that the heavy part gets pushed before the light part of it which causes it to flip over. And trying to move the boosters up really isn't helping. But supposing we used only two boosters and then put some wings on here, it does that. All right, what if we flip it? Then it still goes that way, but at least it looks better. And then a stabilizer going on the back side does something. So we essentially just have a very weird plane. Okay, something I noticed is actually there was a hole at the top of the fairing that wasn't closed. So, it might not have been doing the aerodynamics it was supposed to. That was probably the issue. At least I hope it was, because that means I get to add the rockets back. So we should be able to get this thing to space even better. And by even better, I mean at all. This is looking really good so far. It's not moving at all. Oh, nope, there it's moving. Oh dear, okay. It likes to, okay, I guess we're going this way around the planet now. We're still keeping up a lot of speed, but we're just sort of going the wrong way around the planet. <laughs> oh, and we're actually getting some atmospheric friction on the fairing. Okay, but now we get to disconnect all those and then boost immediately. Da -da 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 -da, not straight up, not straight up. I'm sorry, that was a mistake. Okay, we'll just keep going like this. That should work, right? Is growing, albeit slowly. But we do have a lot of fuel to use now, too. Now, the embarrassing thing is Minmus is entirely going the other way, so I don't think we can use this for any reasonable measure. We'll probably need another stage after the boosters to get out of Kerbin's effective gravity, which goes to show that Delta V isn't everything, I guess. So we might just be redoing this whole structure, so we'll leave this out of the way for now. And then we'll put a decoupler there, and then we can have some more medium thrusters here, or fuel tanks, so we can put on this thruster, which brings our Delta V back to where we were with the boosters. And then once we put the boosters on down here, we should be seeing a lot more favorable results. Except our thrust to weight ratio is below one now. So more boosters, question mark? Yeah, that does a trick. <laughs> I should hope so. That is some SpaceX looking stuff right there. It's just too bad that the only stabilizer reel we currently have is small. And we don't even get the medium one unless we have 530 science, so 500 more science. But hopefully we'll get there after this expedition, so let's just get started building this rocket using medium decouplers this time. So we get enough room to add these big fuel tanks. That way we can put these big thrusters on here. Whoa, what, what the, where, what are you doing up there? So we also don't have any medium nose cones, so we'll have to use this adapter to get to that point. That looks pretty good. And then we can get some decouplers on here. I'm hoping that we can get something not like that. But once I go down to four, it's not enough. Maybe it is. We've launched a rocket like this before. And we're getting some really good Delta V out of that too. Except now the thrust to weight is below one. What if we just throw these in with the other ones? Well, if that does a trick, then that's what we're doing. We'll get this to space one way or another. Away we go. Just please don't flip, that's all I ask. And sure enough, the boosters are going down way faster than these liquid engines. Okay, I am seeing a little bit of wobble, but it should be acceptable to get us where we need to go. But we are not getting the velocity we did before. The boosters are almost out and we're not even through the first layer yet. So we just wait for those to go and then we disconnect them and then we keep going. This is working very well. I'm very nervous to start tilting. We're keeping very good control over everything. Oh, do it, boop, boop. I said we're keeping control. I would like to keep control. All right, we're doing pretty good so far. And we're also going the right direction to meet up with Minmus. Except our apoapsis is not very high. So let's get that pushed out some more. We have plenty of fuel to do it. Where even is Minmus right now? 
It's over there. You know what? That's fine. This is the best our rockets have looked, honestly. And there's not even a Kerbal here to enjoy it. All right, Apoapsis is at 100,000 meters. It's looking really good right now. So let's save some of our fuel, see if we can create a maneuver just to zip this thing out to Minmus. And that's taking more fuel than we have. So let's just secure an orbit with this stage. Yeah, that should work well enough for us. Hopefully the reaction wheel can get us to the target point. And it looks like it is. Thankfully, it's not too far away. Okay, things are looking really good for us so far. And away we go. Keeping the burn up for a solid minute. And there we have an orbit. But we're pushing up our periapsis even more. Okay, now it's sort of circular. And we can be done. Now, Minmus is way over there. Set target. So, whoa, okay, that is way too much. We need to dial this back. The problem is because the tilt is so severe, this is going to be quite the maneuver to try and intercept it. And there we're tilting the wrong way. We're also going severely faster than it too because it's so far out there. So I wonder if it's better to actually approach it from Apoapsis. And, whoa. Hold up, I think oh, I saw something, had... right? Ooh, right there. Yes, that's perfect. Not really, but we're getting there. And that's on the return trip. That actually may be better. Also, what is the trajectory line doing right there? We're gonna be slower here. So it'll be easier to capture, hopefully. Even still, it would be better to try and match Minmus close to our new Apoapsis, so we're going slower. So this is a bit of finagling we're gonna have to do here. Or we could just send the satellite straight out of Kerbin's orbit and see what science we get from that. I could probably use a moon to slingshot farther out and save on Delta V. This is pretty difficult because Minmus is right on the edge of Kerbin's orbit, it seems like, any further out and then we're leaving it. Although to be fair, that could probably be worth a lot of science. But I want to hit Minmus before that. I, uh, I accidentally hit the time warp button. Oh, well, maybe that puts it in a better position. We might have to warp a few times for it to be in a better position, to be honest. So let's just fast forward time a little bit. Ooh, but that seems to have worked out. We got, okay. Oh man, that's actually really close time. Do we just go for it? We might just have to go for it. We just gotta bring this down so it's a bit closer to the planet. Or the moon, I mean. Minmus. Whatever you call it. Just we have a large window. That's actually super good looking right there. Okay, now we need to maneuver to target point before I forget about it. Oh, I hope this rocket can get there. We'll have to drop a stage, which will help. There's a target point. Okay, it looks like we can get there in time, which is good. But man, this is really going to throw our orbit pretty wonky. Which is ideal, because we're sending this straight to Minmus. And probably beyond, honestly. Okay, get there just in time. Burn. And then get rid of this stage pretty quickly. Okay, disconnect. And then keep going. And we are burning like this for a whole two minutes. This thing is really low power on the Delta V then. Hopefully it can do the trick though. And this is so incredibly small too. It's gonna be difficult to be captured by it. So we might just be sailing right past it anyway and then moving into deeper space. Okay, but now we're at the point where this is gonna start growing at a rapid rate. And that's a lot of room for error there. There's no room for error there. That's what I mean. There's a lot of error that can happen in that small amount of room. Okay, three, two, one. We're gonna have to keep burning and stop. Ooh, look at that. We actually got it closer to Minmus than our initial plan. And now the line is just weird through here. Maybe that's intentional because we can still plot a course along it. So. Looking at this, if we were to try and get captured by Minmus, which trying to decipher what this is doing is very weird. Suppose we slow down before entering Minmus, then we just miss it. Okay, I'm starting to see more curve there. I forget how small Minmus just actually is. Whoa, now the exit point is just orbiting around it like that. That's kind of cool. But also that periapsis is only 15,000 meters. Is that going to be safe? Let's see. I want to push the periapsis out a little more to feel safe about it. Okay, 50,000 meters looks like a good altitude. So that's very doable. Oh, and it doesn't burn much at all. Even then, it's still six seconds of burning. These engines are the most efficient thing. Aside from the nuclear ones, but we don't have those yet. And thankfully, the smaller size rocket is a lot easier to maneuver to the mission point. But we're also not even there yet, so let's get there. Whee! Goodbye, Whoa. Kerbin. Where be the Minmus? There it is! Look at that! We also really don't need this fairing anymore, so let's jettison that. Goodbye! 
Is it gonna do what it did before where it just falls straight down? I guess not. But now the solar panels are exposed. We could probably unfurl the antennas too. Now we have a rocket powered slug. Genuinely, I'm not sure if I like how this thing looks now. Like it made sense as it was on the path through the orbit, but now this is just weird. Like I can tell I enter there and then I pass through it along this path. No, I pass through it along this path and then it resumes over there, sort of? This is just weird. But also, my goodness, that is a tiny orbit right there. Maybe I should push it out a little more. Maybe a hundred thousand meters just to make myself feel a little more comfortable. This is our first time going to Minmus. Don't want to get too close and personal with it. But also, small moon gets small orbit. All right, enough of this. We're just going to go through the burn process and admire the rocket powered snail as we do. That is cool right there. But done. Did we get it? Did we? We did get it. Nice. That was actually exact. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so we can actually see the periapsis out here, which is good. So if we, okay, we're going that way. We're going this way. So we need to really slow down in order to get locked in orbit or we speed up. We speed up a little bit, it looks like. And now the apoapsis is right there. 300,000 meters is actually surprisingly far away, but we do have the Delta V to round it out. And that maneuver is still five hours game time away. Holy moly. How slow are we going? We're only, oh, I just, I didn't even see the speed. We're only going 98 meters a second? That's like nothing. So, okay, space numbers are big, I guess. But well, we got this. But also just look at the wonky angle that our orbit is as well. We're not even lined up with it that way. Doesn't matter too much. Oh, but I can correct it here, which doesn't take too much delta V. And there we can shrink the apoapsis down to 100,000 meters. Oh, not quite. But also we need to align the orbit. So like that, that's actually looking really good right now. So let's just admire how it looks to get even closer to Minimus. Whoa, it's rolling like a softball or something. Okay, whoa, we're a lot closer than I thought we were. Wow. And there's also those really smooth spots right there. I should keep note of this vessel. It can travel a lot of ways through space. <laughs> and the thruster is going is so weird. It's like this wiggling a tail. And slugs don't have tails. They're, they're all tail. But I think my favorite part about this is the required delta V is so small, but still the burn time is so big. That's a lot of room to control there. Even more than the smaller thrusters. Funny how that works out. And there we're getting some data samples here. Perfect. Start transmitting that before I forget about it. There are some environment samples that we have, but this thing isn't really equipped to come back home. It is what it is. I also just want to roll this thing upright again because I think that'd be funny. Also, that report transmitted really quickly given the distance that we're at. Either way, it's time to rip. And that is really moving the trajectory line to such a degree, my goodness. Four, three, two, one. And now I'm just confused because that is not at all what I was wanting to do. Okay, now we need to do some like major slowing down to lock this orbit in because something went wrong. Oh boy, we only have a minute to correct this. Okay, like that, periapsis, okay, yep. And then like that, circular, perfect, good enough. Get to the point. I don't know what went wrong there. I was pointed at the mission point and then burned as long as I needed to. This is just being funky now. Thankfully, it's not too late to correct it. I'm trying to stay here, not go away. At least not yet. All right, and this is a long burn too, so it should be a lot better to control. And that actually took us back past the Mun, which is interesting. All right, and that's going straight back to Kerbin, which would be cool if I could make it, but I won't, so we won't worry about it. But this part of it is rounding out incredibly nicely. And we are set. Nice. That is beautiful right there. Difference of apoapsis being 13,000 meters. I'm okay with that. We did it. We secured orbit around Minmus. And if we wanted to be cheeky about it, we could probably set up a maneuver to get to low orbit, whatever that looks like, so that we can get a data sample from there. I'm thinking 14 ought to be low orbit. And then from there, we could probably slingshot somewhere else. It'd be really fun if this little thing could make it to all the different planets, but I feel like it's not equipped for that. Still though, the science slug is proving to be very effective. Trying to bring it back home though is another story entirely. Also, this orbit is so small, it only takes an hour to get to the opposite end of it. That is pretty crazy right there. So we'll have to watch this meter go in so it's not too quickly. I should probably actually just control it by hand. So we can bring that number down to 15,000 in a very controlled manner. There we go. Low speed, not full speed. 
Watching it slowly tick down below 20 and good. Oh, I like how perfect that is. And thankfully there's no atmosphere, so we won't break this thing trying to burn through it or just get caught in the pole so strong that it crashes. But that is majestic right there. And I bet the surface samples are worth so much more science points than even the MUN. I just need to work on my whole land and return to Kerbin bit. Okay, I think we're approaching periapsis, so let's slow down. Point to sling prograde, because that'd be funny. Oh, we're not even there yet. We're going way lower than that. Oh, that is weird to think about. It already looks like we're so close. Goes to show that even though it's a small moon, it's still pretty big in comparison to everything else. And yeah, I really should be watching this. 15,000. Oh, I think this rocket mirror actually moved down a little bit. Did it? Maybe it didn't. Oh, but hey, we just generated some science reports. Nice. And that's worth more because we're getting closer to it. Let's just transmit that. And did we transfer it? I actually don't know if we did. Transmit all. Oh, I hit transmit all, so it's going through the Kerbin data that we already have. Oh, well. Now it's doing the important one. Perfect. 80 more science points. It'd be really tempting to push this thing as low as it can go. But I don't think that would do anything for us, to be honest. So let's see what happens if we just let it rip and send this thing straight out of Minmus orbit and then out of Kerbin orbit. So now we're looking at a really good trajectory for just sending this thing way into Kerbal space. I really wonder what that science is going to be worth. It really is tragic about our samples, though. But there's nothing we can do about it, so we're not going to worry about it. We just have to remember that this is a pretty good setup for a rocket, actually. And we'll watch this burn happen so that it looks good good it's doing a lot of weird things around mun orbit it looks like yeah it's just constantly getting or is that minmus i i have no idea what's happening but it's speeding up Whoa, okay i'm just trying to leave kerbin's orbit not enter a wormhole game it'd be cool if there was a wormhole actually but that's working very nicely three two one and then stop i really could have stopped at any point but now we have the orbit that we're promised. And since it's so flat to everything, I wonder if we can intercept another celestial body and get some science from that, like uh, Duna here. Just kind of eyeballing things as it were. Okay, so that is not even close, but it's actually getting closer if we do that. So we just gotta do some more fancy tilting maneuvers here. Oh, look at that, we can get a Duna! Intercept thing. It is so incredibly brief, but that would be really worth it. Oh, that is so close. Hold on, I overshot. Good, and then this way? No, not that way. This way, ooh. Oh, it's so close to getting affected by the gravity. That is promising. I just saw an intercept happen next to Duna's moon. Oh, even more science. Let's just get all the orbital science. Why not? Oh, and I just realized where we're at is actually in the moon's orbit now. Not Minmus. I was getting the two mixed up. What we can do, though, is just speed away from the moon here after getting closer to it, because I guess that's what we're doing. And is that it? No, we're still in Kerbin's orbit, but we are on our way out. This is going to be big for the satellite. And we did it. We're out. We're orbiting the sun now, and only the sun. All right, let's slow down. This has got to be worth some science. Let me do an experiment. Why is this not worth science? It's a new research location entirely. You're really going to tell me that this isn't something to be sciencey about? Fine, then let's just fast forward our way to Dune then. Oh, it's actually out of communication range. I didn't realize that would be a thing. I guess we are severely away from Kerbin right now, but I thought these antennas would be enough. No comnet connection. We'll deal with that problem later. We can still control this thing, right? We can, right? We actually, we actually can't. Aha. Uh -huh. So I guess we discovered the maximum range of these little communication things. And we'll have to wait for Kerbin to come around again before we do anything. That's no fun. Especially because it's going faster than we are, I think. It actually looks like we're getting closer to it. Sort of. Yeah, it is definitely moving faster than us. It's way away. So I wonder if a satellite network would work. That way it can just sort of relay off each other. I'm not entirely sure, but now Kerbin's catching up to us. Just waiting for the notification for Comnet to reestablish. And, oh, we're super close right there. Please tell me that's in range. It is not in range. Just gotta go a little farther. And it just passed us again. So I think we've lost this vessel. The science slug is free to do what science slugs do, which is just 
fly around and not give me anything. Oh well, the good news is, we were still able to transmit all the research data off of that, so we have some science to work with. So we can buy the last thing in this tree, which is tiny engines. Because what else am I going to use it for? So it's going to take quite a bit more to properly get science from deep space. But we were able to send this satellite successfully out there. So I call that a win. So I do hope you guys enjoyed the video of sending a makeshift satellite into deep space. And we were able to get some good stuff from Minmus. Which means we should be able to use this rocket for a lot more things. Because that was surprisingly reliable. So if you guys have more ideas about that, then be sure to let me know. Thank you very much for watching and sub to intern. And thanks to the channel members, including Bread, Mr. Cripple One, Ancient Elixir One, Corby Farm, Dakota C, Donamoto, Vivian X, Muffin Suffer, Lucas S, Spire Sex, The Real Nickname, Hateful Herald, Peggy Sue, Drupalong, TJ, Seriously Sarcastic, Angel, Lily, and The Miner Within.